Let us discuss today about South Asia. Is it a good alternative to residency in Turkey? At this time, there are many people who have their residency denied in Turkey. It used to be so easy. All of a sudden, it's very difficult. Where would they go? I made one video and people criticized me that I did not mention South Asia. I thought that South Asia really deserves a separate video. And that's it. There is a gossip right now on the street that people who will be purchasing real estate of less than $200,000, $200,000 qualifies you for Tapu residency. Those people who purchase, residen purchase uh, flats for less than that, they will be receiving touristic residency. It is a bit of a shuffle. I have not met anybody who actually did. It seemed to be logical. It seemed like it makes sense. I don't know if it will happen or not. I will be watching. If I see something, I definitely will share it with you. South Asia is actually a great place for residency. There are several countries there. They're all pretty orderly, pretty stable. They have good industrial base. They have wonderful beaches. Some of them, such as Thailand, would have a beach, it would have an urban life, and it would actually have mountains, which is great. Remember to subscribe, leave some comments. You can choose where you want to go. Many people who live in the West don't even realize how developed South Asia is right now. It is still cheap and it is still very affordable. One can buy properties there, one can settle there, there are programs. For instance, in Thailand, a friend of mine who bought a property, he invested and uh, the property will be ready in 2026. He is a good money maker. He is making a lot of money. The problem which I observe with him that he is not very careful about purchasing, very trusting. So far, I think he was lucky, but he tends to trust people very quickly. I will be making another video about mistakes which people make when they move to another country and when they purchase property. So the first one is, it's better to be fully ready, research, and when you come to that country, give yourself time to observe, to understand, to the point where you're comfortable, where you don't have any doubts or resistance. It's not very difficult to reach. It is important to reach. So South Asia, in most cases, it is very well developed, very modern. I'm talking right now about Thailand. There are quite a few Westerners who settle there. There are quite a few digital nomad people who settle there. The internet is really good. One of the easiest way to move to Thailand and to start your journey experience in Thailand. Perhaps you want to have that experience first before you make a decision to settle there, to make it your permanent base. That would be to go and uh, study. Of course, you can come there for a short time and spend a few months there, a few weeks there, just to scratch the surface. If you want to spend a little bit more time, you can go and start studying the language. In most cases, pretty much in every country in South Asia, you will receive visa for study. And the age is not really important in this particular case. The important thing is that it will give you very quick exposure to the culture. In Thailand, if you are interested into Eastern philosophies, Eastern gymnastics, Eastern martial arts, that is also a very good field to be. Many people studied outside of Thailand and they actually have success. Studying in the country where it originated is probably a better strategy. Of course, if you can afford it. One of the down things about the entire Asia is the time lag. I worked with people in Central Asia, I worked with people with uh, Southeast Asia. And the plus of it, if you're working in a team, one person can work 
one time zone and eight hours and the other person can continue working in a different time zone and do this uh, continuous job. That's a good thing. The bad thing is that if you have to have some kind of meetings where you have to discuss things, where you have to work at the same time, that makes it difficult. If your job permits you to work autonomously or permits you to work in shifts, such as previous shift work in Europe and the West, and now you work in South Asia, then it's a good idea. And that will go pretty much for any other countries. The other thing in South Asia, which is very popular right now, is Indonesia, particularly Bali. But besides Bali, there are other islands where one can reside and settle. Bali is very popular with digital nomad. If you come into this idea that you want to be a digital nomad and you're new to it, that would be probably the best place to go if you are not really interested in urban setting and if you're not interested in urban entertainment. If you want to be more in a beach environment, ride a motorcycle, moped or golf cart all around place, either in Thailand or Bali, your rent will be about the same. In Thailand, in some places, it will be probably higher. But in general, $350, $400 should get you a pretty decent place to live. Not luxury, but with all the basic needs satisfied. The other good thing is in Bali, you have the whole herd of people who can share the same experience and you can learn from them what you can do, how you can do it, because those people, they hang out in the same cafes, they hang out in the same places, and you can be quickly part of that. Malaysia is a great place to be now, too. It is a little bit, in my opinion, it's a little bit more conservative than the other two because of the Muslim presence in there. And if you like pork, then Malaysia probably wouldn't be the place to go. Each one of the countries which you will select there will have great cuisine and even regional cuisine, which great to learn and if you like South Asian cuisine as I do it's a wonderful place you will be in Disneyland of South Asia the other place and this is probably the last place for this particular video is Vietnam Vietnam you probably heard about it you probably seen some videos if you are younger you may want to watch a little bit of videos about Vietnam the United States had a war with Vietnam at one time long ago and now they're more or less friends Vietnam has a trade with the United States Same things like becoming more economically connected Vietnam became really modern and lots of digital nomad move to uh, Vietnam and they get their residency there, they work. Even some companies, reasonably large companies who were in IT sector, they actually moved to Vietnam because everything they wanted was there and even more. It was rather inexpensive and pretty orderly. One word of warning about Vietnam, it probably has more crime or higher crime rate, not very high, high, but higher crime rate than in some other Asian countries. Uh, seems like uh, people report about it. And the last place which I want to mention, which you may want to check out, is Cambodia. Cambodia also had a very uh, violent history. And now it's very inexpensive, very orderly. It has fantastic beaches. I have some friends who actually went there recently and they thought it was absolutely paradise on earth. That's about South Asia. It offers variety of experiences, it offers variety of cultures and a variety of prejudices, I guess, in a way. All of them are pretty much welcoming to Westerners. If you are a native speaker of English, there is a good chance you can get work visa in either of those countries and teach English for a while. While you're teaching English, you find some other places and some other ways to prolong your stay or even settle permanently. I'm Vas. Remember to subscribe, leave some comments. Good luck.